Welcome back to Bulletproof Mindset. I am your host, Dale Crosser, and I release episodes every Monday and Thursday. Monday is a solo episode, and in today's episode, as you can tell from the title, we are talking all about friendships. Now, one thing that's not really spoken about much of is the emotional impact of the loss of a friend. And I don't mean loss of a friend as they have died. I mean, you have a strong bond with someone and you just go your own separate ways for whatever reason. That shit cuts deep. So in today's episode, we're going to have a wee chat about that. We're going to run through some coping mechanisms, what's happened to me and some of the advice that I can give you of how I've personally dealt with it. And uh, yeah, just hopefully shed a wee bit more light on a subject that I don't think too many of us talk about. I think with the whole rise of mental health, when it comes to our friendships, we, we, we're not quite open enough where we need to be to live a, live a healthier life. And as the research suggests when you have strong friendships in your life then you are more likely to live a longer happier and healthier life so with that being said i hope you enjoyed today's episode you can find me on instagram at coach crosser you can find the podcast page page at bulletproof mindset underscore underscore have a wonderful rest of your day and enjoy today's episode what's up guys so i had a bit of a different episode planned for tonight but i'm going to switch it up and speak about Something that I don't know if it's spoken about too much of, if I'm being honest, but something that I believe most of us will experience in this some this thing we call life, and that is, as you can tell with the title of this video, the loss of a friendship. And I don't mean like someone dying. Dying's like a whole separate subject, of course. Um, but it can it can hurt just as bad. I was actually thinking about this earlier. Sometimes it's easier if someone does die because this can then be an excuse as to why the friendship never lasted or whatever but um just can i take it from the top relationships are important to us all we're all social beings we crave strong connections and in fact there's been multiple research done now on the impact to our longevity and our overall health and we've established that those who have strong friendships have lower stress levels, have more fulfilment in life, happiness, and uh, those who don't, sadly, are impacted with higher stress, um, are up to, I think one of the stats I looked at just before this episode is like 30% more likely to die sooner. And in layman's terms, when people feel lonely or they don't have many friends, it makes us sad. It's it's a hard thing to go through. But being lonely for a long time can actually hurt our health. And this is where scientists have looked at the comparisons to things like cigarette and junk food or um, all these different variables where not having strong relationships in your life can actually be just as bad, if not worse, than smoking cigarettes. One of them was like 17 cigarettes a day. And uh, you never really know how accurate these things are, but for anyone listening that has went through like a, a, a friendship breakup, not a, a boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband breakup, but an actual proper loss of a friendship, you can understand why, because there's a lot of loneliness and sadness that comes along with this sort of thing. And they always talk about therapy for couples, therapy for marriage, no one really talks about therapy for friends. Uh, maybe maybe it's something that exists out there, but something that uh, probably will get more and more popular, I would imagine. So in this podcast, as I said, we talk a lot about the physical stuff that we can do, the nutritional stuff, the sleep, the, the stress management, your biomarkers, resistance training, lifting weights, what's the right program to do, how much muscle mass to have. There's a, there's a, a circle that sits within this, and uh, if we look at a pie chart, for example, that circle is broken up into all those things that I've just mentioned. But one part of that pie chart is the social connection. We are social beings and we uh, want to be in communities. We want to be liked as individuals. And the whole negativity and positivity, you know what? I, I think I've brought this up just a couple of episodes back, but if you're around people who are constantly trying to bring you down and being very negative, it, it, it's a it's a stressful situation to be in and you find yourself being, you could feel it, you like try and shake it off, you're like, ah, oh, I fucking feel horrible just by being around some people like this. 
And some of these people might end up being your friends. So, so in today's episode, we're going to talk more about losing a friendship and the emotional impact that it can have, but also some tools and levers that you can pull on to kind of help get you over it and looking forward and all that sort of stuff. So as I was saying there, like friendships are absolutely important to us. We are social creatures. We want to be part of groups, part of communities. And don't get me wrong, there is a couple of outliers who are lone wolves, but from a kind of mental health capacity and from this social creature being point of view, we want to be connected to others. And we, I, I don't know if we necessarily need to be liked. We, well, we absolutely don't need to be liked and loved by everyone. But the, I guess there's portions of the population that are split into different categories. So for me, I'm a, very much a, a people pleaser. I don't like the fact that I could say something and not be liked by someone else. That's something I've been really working on. And I think this comes from um, your always looking up to the people who are further ahead of you when it came to the, the corporate world and always try to please them and make sure that, like, I want you to like me, I want you to tell me that I'm doing a good job. Uh, that's carried over massively into the later part of my 20s. So I'm sure we've all been impacted by the loss of a friendship. We all had the emotional impact that comes along with that. Some of you may be more resilient than, than others. Some of you might have been an emotional wreck and to this day are an emotional wreck. So let's kind of run through a couple of key points, what to think about. Um, let's think about the types of friendships that exist out there and and all this other stuff. Uh, so for me, there's probably two stories that come to mind and I'm not going to dive into the specifics, but one of them is a, is a childhood friend and the other... I guess is someone that is like more of a newer relationship. And so for me, I have had lots of friends move on or we've parted ways. Uh, a couple do stand to stand out to mind where it's been a sort of hard, a hard launch is a word, but hard finish, I guess, if you want to call it that, where we've came to the conclusion that uh, there's no point hanging about with each other anymore because we are two completely different people. And I'd probably say that has been the hardest one that is, um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily impacted me, but that I've dealt with. There's a lot of sadness that comes with that, uh, especially when you start to kind of look, well, I'll, I'll run into this a wee bit deeper, but it, it brings to light like a lot of things. Like, are you happy with the person that you've become? Could you have done anything different? Is there more that you can do to maybe salvage the relationship? Is there more uh, that you could have, kind of communicated with there's ton there's just tons of things that run through in your mind and that I'd probably say the thing that's been the hardest for me is for some well I guess for someone who's got this podcast got lucky enough to build it to a, a, a place where people are willing to come on and chat with me and I can dive into their story and uh, spark a bit of a relationship and in some cases a friendship with but in reality, I don't have a, a big wide circle of friends. I don't, I don't, I've only came across a few people who kind of swear by that they've got massive groups of friends. But for me, I've always had a kind of closer circle. It's only ever been sort of one, two or three people and, or, or three really, really close friendships. And one of those close friendships, as I said, sort of came to an end. And out of that close friendship, that was the oldest friendship that I had. And that one, as I said, a lot of sadness and that had came with it. But do you know what actually kind of hurt the most with this is when you meet newer groups of people and you, you've you seen everyone kind of banter and going back and forth and they talk about the past and things they've done when they were a kid. In those groups of people, some of them can share that experience together. And I remember one time, like, I can't remember what we were doing, but we are having a laugh about something and it was like what we'd done when we were in high school and what we'd done when we were, like, summer holidays. And everyone's all saying, I was like, oh yeah, I've done this. And I was like, fuck man, I can't, I don't have the ability to share those memories with 
that person anymore because the only other person like it's the whole you know how when you try and tell a funny story no one else really gets it but the only person that can get it is the person who was there with you it's like that there's like a I feel like there's a, a big chunky that is taken away because the only person that can experience it is that friendship that existed so that was that was probably one of the things that kind of cut deep for me uh Something that didn't really happen, but I hear it with others, is the whole just having someone to lean on, just having someone that you were always very open with and someone that you could confide in and trust and someone that you respect. I'm not saying that I never I never had this with that person or with the friendship I had. Ours sort of just evolved and we sort of evolved into two different people. It wasn't it like a bad ending? It was just like this was this was a season. This was a seasonal friendship, as uh, Chris had said on a previous podcast, and and it came to an end. And that's a really nice way of looking at it. Doesn't make it any less sad, but through time, just like grief, I guess is is one part of the healing process. When someone passes away, time does heal. You can't kind of sit and be all morbid, doom and gloom. But uh, which I'm going to get into at some points. There's going to be some practical advice, but I wanted to just kind of share that. Um, other friendships that have kind of ended has been like disagreements or. A big thing is sometimes you think you're friends with someone, like you really get to know them and then you realise, ah, I don't actually like this person as much, we've got nothing in common and then you sort of just drift apart and sort of go in your own separate ways. So there are two types of friendship losses. So one, you just grow into two different people and you no longer click with the same individual. And two, sometimes you really get to know that person or, or I guess this falls under the same point, they've maybe evolved into a person that you don't really like or you you don't kind of have similar values and connection that you maybe once did the other two which i guess i've been well i guess some of this has sort of happened to me as well is the loss of a friend through moving away so myself and joe we moved to nottingham for four years of our life and i built some really solid friends down there and since moving back up to scotland Sadly, those friendships have dwindled and they were, again, they were really, really strong connections. Actually, one of them, we were that good a friend that he's moved up with me. So shout out to Sam. He's he's fully committed to the cause and uh, ended up like getting into a relationship with Jillian's friend and all that sort of stuff. So uh, that's commitment for you. That's the type of friendships you want to see. But yeah, the, the, the moving one's a hard one because probably even saying this out loud, loud, you could probably think of some friends that you were really, really close with and because you've moved to a different part of the world, it's maybe making you realise, you're like, oh shit, I could have actually been doing something better. I could have been reaching out to them and maybe maybe I should try and rekindle that friendship. And then actually another point would be the loss of a friendship due, due to like a betrayal. So thankfully I've not had uh, anyone betray me as, as such but I would imagine this happening more with girls like in fact this is a really unfair thing to say I'm making this out as if <laughs> this is why mo like movies generally ruin our outlook but in a typical movie where the girl's dating the guy and then her friend ends up liking the guy and then the guy and the, the guy that's with the girlfriend ends up hooking up with her friend so like you, you know, get what I mean now here as much as that's more movie romance and all that sort of things, maybe it's happened to you. But yeah, I can imagine that being a tough pill to swallow. So these sort of things happen. So off the back of that, doesn't matter how resilient, how tough you are, there is an emotional impact and everyone's going to have different processes in how they grieve. But ultimately, yeah, I think you have to recognise whether you think you're this big macho man and you don't need to kind of soften up a little bit it's not necessarily about softening up it's about processing the sadness the grief or the I don't know what other word you would use but it ain't a happy feeling to say goodbye to a friend or to move on from a friendship especially the longer that you've had it so there's there's like a mourning process with it it, it generally is like losing someone in fact I'll go as far as saying it's probably easier if the person passed away than it did for the relationship to end because then it can be accepted. This is this is more for someone who is maybe at the receiving end of the relationship where that other person is choosing choosing to walk away from you. Now I don't wish that upon anyone, of course, but the grief that comes with it, uh, there is a mourning process. For me, some of the feelings that come to mind would be like 
the feeling of rejection, abandonment. Uh, I guess there's a bit of trust that's that's lost there as well because let's be honest, if you're if, the, if this is someone that you're considering your best friend, the deepest sort of relationship when it comes to a friendship level that you have, they probably know a lot about you. You've probably been very vulnerable with them over years, months, whatever you want to call it, decades. And for that to end, then yeah, there's, there's with the sadness, with the mourning, there is abandonment, rejection that comes with that. And through the midst of all that, what it does to our character, what it does to our, our mentality, we lose, obviously there's a, the, the trust element, but with the loss of that trust becomes the loss of your self-esteem. Are you good enough? What could I have done different? It's not me, it's you, that whole that whole malarkey. But that starts to affect who we are mentally. It starts to, the, the, the um, self-doubt starts to creep in and it's like the mirror's being held up against you. Are you who you thought you were? And I, I said this on a, an episode for well over 100 episodes ago. When you've been cheated on, it's very easy to point fingers, and I'm not condoning cheating by any means uh, at all, but it's very easy to point fingers, but one of the most powerful things you can do is look within and go, what could I have done better? Same with the breakup, same with the relationship side of things, same with the friendship on this scenario. What more could you have done? And if the answer is nothing, if there's generally nothing that you could have done, then cool. That should be enough closure for you to start to move on to the uh, the next chapter, which is the moving on process. Now, like any old relationship, what causes a friendship to break up? So we mentioned some of them earlier on. Sometimes we move away. Sometimes we just, there's a, there's a betrayal part that's happened. Sometimes you've just grown into two different people. But at a deeper level, one of the most common reasons relationships and friendships break up or go their own separate ways is down to miscommunication. That is a big one. Uh, myself and Jillian, I consider us to be rock solid, but I even find myself ch challenging. And I'm like, man, we're like the reason we've had that argument is because we're not communicating to each other. It always, 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 always drills back to communication. And sometimes our ego gets in the way, and sometimes our emotion gets in the way, and we we let it build up, and it becomes this big explosion. But when you get to the roots of What's actually happening? Nothing's ever been done with malicious intent. It's always, uh, I didn't really, I didn't understand that because they never communicated that, communicated that, or I never communicated X, which was the the, the cause of of Y. The reasons can generally be the 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 whole circle of life, and this is this is a really important thing I want you to take away because you might. You might be getting, well, if you made it this far into the episode, thank you for still sticking with us. But if you made it this far and you haven't sort of went through this yet, then the expectation that it can probably happen, it most likely will. And I don't mean to be like all morbid and fucking doom and gloom about it, but so in this journey of self-development, when you're working on yourself, you're evolving as a person and that can start to cause a bit of conflict. But with that self-development, there's a, there's a selfishness that comes with it and with the selfishness there is priorities that change so maybe the circumstances that you were setting up before where you're meeting every weekend you're going out drinking whatever it is that you do to socialize you start missing that because you get in a relationship or you get a new job or you have a kid like priorities will change and the good thing is like Sometimes that's not enough for friends to like go off their own ways. It may mean that the communication between you guys and girls may be less and less, but but when you meet back up, you are able to kind of rekindle that that kind of looking back at the old days. You hear this actually in pubs. See if you see if you're listening to this from the UK. Any pub conversation, any anything where there's a group of guys round beers and you're you're talking and you're listening back, it's always about the good old days, but sometimes you don't realise you're in the good old days and that's where the kind of priority side of things and the whole life values and self-development. They always say your friends are different from primary school to high school and high school to your first job or college or university, from that world into your first job, from that into your family life. And as we get older, like sadly, like this, it's not quite an epidemic yet, but 
a lot and lot, there's more and more people becoming lonelier. Mental health is on the rise because although our phones were well connected and we can like each other's Instagram posts and we can DM each other, we ain't properly connecting with people and this this whole strong friendship friendships we think we have, but in reality we don't. So let's move on to coping with the loss. How do we move on from this? Well, I'm going to tell you what's worked for me. Uh, maybe give you some strategies that you can work on. But see, ultimately, what this what's going to help with you is going to be very individualised. I don't think there's a, a magic formula for this. The only thing that I can sort of guarantee you is that time genuinely is a healer. It may feel really, really sad today, but see, tomorrow you'll feel a tiny wee bit less sad. It's like grief and... Uh, it's about a sad thing to look back on, but any sort of person that's passed away in your life, my, it doesn't matter how traumatizing that may have been for you or how difficult and upset you were, you where you're at now probably wasn't hasn't been as difficult as it's been in the past, and yeah, I think the the message with that is like it will get better, and it will get better as day go as the day goes on. But ultimately, I think for most of us, we need to we need to accept it. I think, see, particularly for guys out there, you, like me, we think we can take this whole world on ourselves and the burden on our shoulders, this macho man, like, it, you're weak if you give in to this. And, like, I, I understand it, but see, with this sort of stuff, like, it's, just, it's all right to feel sad about it. It's alright to have a bit of emotion towards something. Uh, it doesn't mean you're any less of a of a man, or does it? In fact, I would argue this makes you more of a man, accepting what has happened and how it makes you feel. Like, oh man, that that actually hurts. Why does it hurt? But you know what? Actually, didn't want that to end. And we'll come on to like where these line of questioning ends up leading you in in a little sec, but. Acknowledgement and acceptance is probably the, the first sort of step. If you look at any sort of grief, and um, I think, is it the Seven Stages of Grief is a, is a book that's out there that's very commonly known. Um, but you look at any of these sort of things and acceptance and, and actually making it real, I guess, is the main thing. Because I think guys or girls out there, there's maybe a part within you It's like, ah, we'll be fine. And once time's passed, we'll make up. We, we always make up. But this might be the this might be the time that you don't. So yeah, so first stage is that. Second stage might is actually confiding in someone else. And I hope that every single one of you guys listening to this has that person, whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend. Sometimes it may need to go another level deeper and it might need to be something that's with someone who doesn't have a bias whatsoever. It can have a very like therapeutic approach to it or even therapy in itself. So things things that sort of helped me was the whole reflection piece actually and seeing it that just because a friendship has ended and even though it may not be the best of terms or it's what you wanted, but having the ability to look at that friendship or look back at that friendship and recognise some of the lessons, the good times, the bad times, but more that it wasn't like all for nothing. And, and that's what I really liked about the episode with Chris Bradley. He mentioned that it was a seasonal friendship and some friends are that seasonal friend or some friendships are seasonal. They were for a chapter of your life and there will be a purpose to that. Nothing is ever wasted. It's all it's all lessons and things that we start to self discover about. Like that in fact that's a that's a point I never really written down was the what did you discover about yourself with that friendship? Use it as a as a tool. Use it as a bit of uh, armor and ammo into being a stronger individual in your self development journey. And with that, I would probably say, where's opportunities where you probably could have been a wee bit better? So for me, I know, like in friendships that have kind of parted ways in the past, I was like, you know what, I wasn't really a good friend there, and I've maybe left it too late to be a good friend there, and all this sort of stuff, but look at, look kind of within, is, is there areas where you're like, actually, I should have challenged this a wee bit earlier on in a friendship, or maybe I should have brought them along on this journey that I'm on myself, like there's, there's, there's 
I, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think deep down, once you start asking yourself that question, what was the opportunity of growth? Then you can start to pinpoint what that means for you. So they're sort of the main ones. Like, to give yourself time to. I hate the whole heal. Oh, you need to go on a healing journey. Just give yourself some space, some some time to heal, some some time to process and iron out your thoughts. Hill walks have been the go to for me. Getting out myself, whether it's a run or like I don't have noise cancelling headphones, but sometimes I'll put my headphones in just to kind of dampen the noise of the world and just walk. Like, in fact, see the other day I was out running and I had a, I had a moment of this where I wanted to try and run and catch sunset. And then on the run, the way back, the sun the sun was like fully set and it was dark and I was in the middle of like, I was in the middle of nowhere. If anyone's got me on Instagram, they would have seen I had the head torch on a couple of weeks back. So I'm in the middle of nowhere and I was like, it's so quiet here. So I took my headphones out. I was like, oh, it's a wee bit freaky, but I've got this torch in my head. I turned the torch off and I just, I'm a wee bit of a freak sometimes. I just looked up in the sky, stars were out and all that. And for the OG listeners, you know how much, uh, how deep I can go when I'm just looking at the universe. And that, just that little moment for me was another part where I did start to think about the people in my life and the close friendships that I have. But that allowed me just to help, again, process that part. And another point I'll probably make is it doesn't matter how much you heal, how much you grieve or how much you process and move on, like someone passing away, it's always there's always going to be an element of sadness that creeps its way back in. But what actually happens is as that sadness creeps in from time and time again, the window of how long it lingers shortens. And... I wouldn't fight against it. I think I tried to. I was like, yeah, I was like, fuck it. Like, it is what it is. I'll sort of move on. But it has more of an emotional hold over you if you don't accept it. And that's why acceptance is one of the first steps in any sort of healing journey. So for me, it was like, yeah, right. Okay, this is a bit sad. This is a bit shit. X, Y, Z. Okay, I feel better. I've got other stuff that's going on in my life. So you just naturally move on anyway because we've all got jobs to do. We've got jobs to go to other people that we we want to show up for and then six weeks later or a random moment will happen you're like oh I used to do that with such and such and you're like ah you're met with that sadness again and it lingers over you and and you accept it and you you create your space and you go through these things that I'm saying here and you're like ah I feel a bit better now and then again a couple of months from now or a couple of years from now same thing happens but the window of the sadness get shorter and shorter so, so please know that wherever you are in this this journey yourself okay another point I'm kind of I don't know if this should have been before the whole accepting and moving on but a point you want might sorry a point you might want to consider is is the can a friendship be saved is is can it be reconciled can it be um can work go into that friendship to make it better and stronger because it's someone you want to keep around. Now, what sort of factors do you need to consider before going into this? Well, I think it has to be mutual, doesn't it? I think uh, both parties need to be playing the game because there is two sides to a story, but there is two people that equally need to play their part in that friendship. And that's the hard thing when someone's pulling away and you're trying to pull them there. That sometimes is the hardest friendships to let go of. And yeah, that was, for me, that was probably what was the most difficult. It was like, fuck this. I wish something bad happened because then it was just like, boom, clean cut, see you later, dick, bye. And then, but if that's not happened, it's like, ah, I need to let go of this person. Even though you might not want to, that becomes the hardest one to let go of. But I think like creating a space of like being truly honest with that person. If you're anything like me, we're all people pleasers and not many people really like conflict, but the more comfortable you can get with the conflict, the better the outcome of reconciling or um, saving the, the friendship may be. So kind of creating an environment where you can be open and honest with each other, get everything out on the table and truly understand why the friendship might be drifting. And it might just be as simple as, like, one thing that's happened, it's a, there's a good story, actually. Um, not good in the sense it's happened, but... Uh, I know myself and of friends where we've received messages and it's like 
I didn't. I don't feel like you care anymore. I feel like you're too busy for me. Blah 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 blah. And it's like fuck. I did not mean for that to come across that way. But you're right. I hear what you're saying. Let's create a space where, or let's be more consistent with each other, where we don't let that happen anymore. And that's why communication is always a big one. It's always going to come back to that. Are we communicating effectively how we feel to our best friends? And uh, it seems a bit weird to say because usually, like, oh, that, that's like all relationship talk. And you're right. Like, friendships is a relationship. Uh, but they have different values, I guess. They have different purposes. I think, um, I, 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 you know, I actually don't know. I, I, I don't know where I stand in this. Like, Jill's been the, the, the rock in my life that's been consistent throughout the last 12 years and friends have came and go within that. And yes, I can confide in, in, in friends in my circle, but ultimately she's... She, she is my, my everything. And maybe that's when I'm a wee bit lucky where I've got that to fall back on. But equally, I know that that might be a role that, that she has within a relationship from husband and wife. But we need to have those outlets as a couple that we can go to our friends. And I'm glad Jillian has that. And then I also I also have mine. So they, they're absolutely needed within it. But... Yeah, they, from a relationship and a friendship point of view, they do serve different purposes and they're both just as equal. So an environment where you can be open and honest and the hardest thing about this whole thing is try not be biased towards your experience. Try and try and see it through the lens of your friend. That's a, that's a fucking it's a hard pill to swallow because as always, it's like the mirror's been held up against you and you sometimes you might be getting called on your insecurities and being con- getting called on your bullshit <laughs> uh, but yeah you need to you need to try and approach this with a non-biased view and a whole like like it might just be the conversation might go as something as like I just need to say everything of how I'm feeling whether it's right or whether it's wrong let me just kind of get this out and you get it all out and kind of see where it goes from there see what sort of conversation it opens up uh, try and not be I find, this, I find this quite a hard one, but it's try not to do it with hate or spitefulness because that does say more about us or says more about you, should I say. If that's like your go-to play where it's all malice and it's all like attack, attack, attack and it's like, no, it's not what I want to do here. Like, what is my actual deep feeling? Like, why am I, why am I getting so defensive in the first place? And as I said, it might be because you're getting called on your bullshit for the insecurities they might have. So when... And in fact, I'll tell you one, and I'm sure Jill won't mind me sharing this, but Jill will say something like, I just feel like you don't care sometimes. And I get, I've got my back up in the past about that. And I'm like, fuck, the reason I'm getting so angry about that is because I know she's right. I can see where she's coming from. When we've done this, this and this, I've never shown any interest. And it's like, fuck, right, let me make a stop. Let me try and make that a better area for us to be, uh, to have a stronger relationship. And that's on me. And that's, yeah, I'm, I'm saying that as if I'm a pro at that because that's a conversation that's came up over the last 12 years and and when it first comes up, it's like, right, Dale, you've, here's here's how you're looking and it doesn't match how I, I feel I'm being, or it doesn't match how I feel I've been acting and because that's a mismatch to my identity, I'm like straight on the defensive and straight on the attack mode. How do we divert this conversation? So try and avoid that. Okay, moving on. How do you move on from, uh, so you've tried to rekindle it, it's not working or you're just like, nap straight up, I'm going my own way. How do you move on? Well, the best way to get over someone is to get under someone. Is that is that the saying? You can tell I've been in a relationship for a long time if that ain't it. But genuinely, filling that void with other things that, kind of gets you that same fulfillment or feeling so friendships what do we look for as i said we're social beings we we like to connect with others we like to have fun banter whatever you want to call it so how do we create settings where we can meet other people so what's some of your hobbies hill walks um run clubs lifting clubs bulletproof lifting clubs if you want to come along to that but looking at opportunities and hey, here look this can be like going out with people from work and regularly showing up to different occasions because eventually over time you, you start connecting with other people but finding 
finding what is stuff that you're interested in. And so, sadly, like for most of us, some of the friendships end because we start pursuing our own self-development journey or we start pursuing our own fitness journey and the friends that we're hanging about with start to might throw some shade your way because you're changing as an individual and on the pursuit of that it's like that's a friendship that then gets cut off but in the, the kind of sacrifice of changing your identity changing who you are as a person working on what you want to achieve in life what from a fitness perspective or a financial perspective or a career perspective then might rabbit hole you down into finding a new community, a new 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 group of friends. But it, the sacrifice is you might have to cut off some of your old friends. But I think as long as you lead from a, a strong communication point of view and you communicate that to quote unquote older friends, then the friendship should continue because the the space will be allowed to let you go off in your journey and still showing up. And like I've got friends who. They're into football, into golf and everything. I couldn't give a shit about that sort of stuff, but I still consider them close friends because I have an element of respect and the respect goes both ways, but we can still have our banter and we still have the same sense of humour and the same types of people almost. Uh, so that kind of allows us to keep that bond regardless of how little we see each other. Now, when moving forward, like I found myself having my barriers up and... A lot of that, in fact, I'll be open about this, like doing the podcast with James for him to move on. It's like straight away I've made my mind up. I will not let anyone else podcast with me because there's a fear that they could step away. Now, might that be a good strategy to have a co-host in the future? Maybe. So it's really hard to like not have this defence mechanism that's like, no, 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 I'm not going to have any other person on the podcast. Now, that's a different one. That's more of a business relationship. But when it comes to the friendships, it's like if if someone sort of pulled away from you, you can really struggle to trust someone. You can really struggle to bring down your barriers and be vulnerable. I guess that's really what a deep relationship and friendship is. It's having the ability to like socialise and connect with, but also let your guard down and just be just kind of open with no judgement and fear that you're going to be judged. Uh and that's really where the friendships are, are solid. And a lot of people will get this in their relationship, of course, as well. But from a friendship point of view, you need to be able to trust and open yourself up. A lot of this has parallels and similarities to uh, uh, like actual relationships. Girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife. Girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend. Whatever you want to call it. But you need to, like, just because one bad relationship's happened shouldn't kind of write off the 7 billion people that are on the planet, you know what I mean? So be be cautious, yeah, but also be kind of open-minded. And the best thing about pursuing environments and communities of things that you're interested in, you've already got a commonality. That's what I love about lifting weight. So when I bring people into the group stuff, it doesn't matter how different they are, it doesn't matter how the differences in age, gender, hobbies, there's one thing they all have in common and that is that they're not happy with their fitness levels to start with and they want to make a change in it. And we're all doing that together through the resistance training. So the experience of going through that with someone else that's in the same shoes as you, straight away, got a connection with, you got a spark with. And who knows, you might go, here, do you like playing Halo 3? And they go, yeah, I love playing Halo 3. And you're like, oh man. It's like, do you watch anime? Oh yeah, I watch anime. Did we just become best friends? It's like the whole stepbrothers mean. And now that's obviously some things that I hold very dear to my heart. But uh, yeah, like it, it just sort of spirals from there. And sometimes the opposites attract as well. Sometimes I actually think I'm friends with some guys, and I'm like, we fucking have nothing in common. How the fuck are we friends? And it's there's a humour part, there's the banter part, and uh, I just some people just have personalities that are so likable. It's like such a good person to be around. So uh, it doesn't always have to be interest, but interest in hobbies can obviously amplify that. So we wee bit of a recap, some closing statements then. Friendships play a massive role in our health and longevity. Uh, you, you can't, the whole lone wolf road can only take you so far. And look, you absolutely need to be selfish as well. There's maybe something I haven't really quite covered off. There will be selfish parts of you 
that have to come out in your pursuit of fitness, career, self-development. But in that pursuit of the the journey that you're on, and when you're being selfish, recognise how selfish are you being. You need to be selfless in some scenarios as well. Uh, for me, I realised that the first year having this studio, I had to sacrifice a lot of my time and, and build it and pour a lot of my energy and soul into that. And that meant my friendships suffered. My relationships with my family suffered. My relationship with my wife even suffered to some degree because I was always, always working. Now, that had to happen, but I also had to make sure, am I communicating that to the friends and the people I want in my life around me? And a chunk of people, I never done that. And that might be one of the reasons why some of those friendships came to an end. Uh, so being selfish is an absolutely... Being selfish, uh, being selfish absolutely needs to happen. But you also need to communicate to those around you and meet them halfway. It shouldn't always be so one-sided. Uh, no relationship. Uh, like uh, That's why some relationships might end as well. You feel that you're the one always making the effort. You're the one always doing stuff. But rather than just cutting ties with that person, communicate to communicate it to them. So here, man, like used to think we were really close, but I've been feeling a lot lately. It's always me making an effort. And just see where the conversation goes from there. Okay, so that wraps up today's episode. Not where I was expecting this episode to... Or this wasn't the episode I was expecting to record tonight. We're just approaching 20 past 12. This episode is going up in less than six hours. So I better get to editing that. Look, life is going to throw its curveballs. And I'm always going to try and be as transparent as I can on these episodes. Like, what's on my mind recently was the whole friendship side of things and kind of got me thinking and realised that there's a lot of value in having strong friendships. Being able to have a strong friendship is a whole other conversation, but even if you look back on this episode, there's things that you can do to strengthen the friendships that you already have. But look, loss of a friendship is a is a hard thing to to deal with. There's a big emotional impact that comes along with that. But as I said earlier on, time is a healer and that sadness that maybe holds over you just now kind of dwindles as time and time goes on. Uh, but you can't just be a lone wolf. You can't take you can't take on the world alone. You need to have these strong relationships and so the lack of strong relationships in our life is just as bad for us as things like smoking, being highly stressed all the time. If you don't have them, you genuinely are chasing an early grave. So with that positive note, I hope this episode's helped you. Look, if you want to help us out, you want to support us, you want to be my friend, then leaving a five-star rating on the podcast would mean the world to me. Uh, chasing 300 five-stars, so I would, yeah, very much appreciate it. And uh, until next time, have a good one.